Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to my channel Master Computer Science Subjects. In this video we discuss about <coughs> the role of assemblar and its function. At the same time uh, we learn uh, what is the assemblar design to assemble a program. How the assemblar is designed to assemble a program. Okay, this is the assemblar which takes source program as an input. In general the source program is written in mnemonics. Mnemonics are assembly level language we can say. I will give some examples for mnemonics. The instructions like this LDA, store accumulator, add, sub, multiplication, division. Instructions of these type are nothing but mnemonics or the source program. This is being given as input to the assembler then the assembler reads this program line by line and it translates it into object code object code is in binary form which is zeros and ones okay after the assembler there are two system softwares which are in picture loader and linker linker links one or more object files and makes it ready for the execution Loader loads a program from the secondary memory into the primary memory and allows it for execution. So this is the function of a assembler. In short, you can remember it as the assembly level language is translated into machine level language. That is zeros and ones. Okay. Next we see what are assembler directives. Along with the assembly level language program, there are some assembler directives seen in the program also. Those directives are pseudo instructions. These pseudo instructions can never be translated into object code, but it provides some necessary information to the assembler. Okay, let us see some examples. Start, end, byte, word. RESB means reserve byte. This is reserve word, base and no base. These are the few examples for assembler directives. Start assembler directive tells the assembler from which address the program begins. End indicates the end of the program to the assembler. Byte and word tells what type of data can be stored in that particular memory location. Whether assembler can store a byte or it can store a word. Okay, what is reserve byte and reserve word? It tells the assembler that it has to reserve so many bytes. It informs the assembler that it has to reserve so many words. Base and no base assembler directives tells the information about the base register. Okay, these are the few examples for our assembler directives. Okay, now let us see why do we need to pass assembler to assemble the instructions. To translate the assembly level language into machine instructions, why do we need a two pass assembler? First, what is two pass? It means assembler has to scan the program two times. Then only it is possible for the assembler to translate the program into object code. For example, this is the assembly level language program. This column is location counter, which is nothing but the address of every instruction. By the way, it is the address of these labels also. Every program is of uh, this format. I mean, three columns we have to remember. The first column is label. The second column is operator or we can call it as mnemonics. And the last column is operand. Label, operator and operand put together is nothing but an assembly level language program. Okay. Now we have to understand why two passes is required. Okay. Let us assume that assembler is scanning the very first instruction. The first instruction is store linkage register return address. It means the content of linkage register should be stored in this memory address. The memory address is given the name RETADR. When it reads or when it scans this instruction for the first time, the assembler knows what is STL. It knows the opcode of this instruction, but it does not know whereabouts of return address. Okay, where is this return address available? It is available at the address 1033. So when it is reading this, it will not know the whereabouts of this written address because the reference is forward reference. Until it reads this instruction, the assembler does not know the whereabouts of written address. That is why the assembler is designed as two-pass assembler. 
we are allowing the assembler to read the program two times okay now just to let us have a look what are the functions of the assembler it translates the symbolic operands to their equivalent machine addresses it also converts the mnemonic opcodes to their machine language equivalents it converts every instruction into proper format it represents the data constant into equivalent hexadecimal representation and finally writes the object code even though when i read this you might not be able to understand but i will solve an example with respect to this you will come to know the meaning of each and every line right now let us understand what is happening in every pass there are two passes we know that in pass 1 for every instruction address is being given that is the first step and in the second step the values of the labels will be stored in a data structure called a symbol table and that may be used in pass 2 and in the third step we are allowing the assembler to perform some processing of assembler directives these are the things happening in pass 1 let me show it here in the program itself so first we will be finding the addresses for all the instructions once we found the addresses for all the instructions we will be coming to know the address of the labels also for example the address of the label first is 1000 c loop is 1003 return address is 1033 so we are finding the addresses by the way we are resolving the addresses of the labels during pass 1 okay what is happening in pass 2 every instruction is translated into its machine code and the data values are uh, uh, equivalent uh, hexadecimal values are found for the data values and of course whatever the assembler directives are not processed in pass 1 that will be processed in pass 2 and finally the object program will be written okay this is the structure of the two pass assembler source program is being given as input to pass 1 pass 1 is interacting with the two data structures one is op table another one is symbol table after the pass 1 an intermediate file is generated that is being given as input to pass 2 pass 2 is still continuing to interact with the symbol table and finally it generates for every instruction its equivalent object code this is the overall picture of the two pass assembler okay now let us see what are the data structures involved while assembling the instructions one of the data structure is symbol table the other data structure is opcode table okay what is symbol table all the symbols along with their addresses are pushed label name and the corresponding value apart from that some more important attributes are also available flag what is the type of that label what is its length all those information are also available and symbol table as well as opcode table both are implemented using hash table right but symbol table is dynamic table whereas opcode table is static table what is dynamic table we are able to insert the symbol we are able to delete the symbol and we are able to search for a symbol in the symbol table okay already we discussed about this opcode table just we refresh once opcode table what is opcode table for every operator like load store stl uh, jump instruction for every operator there will be an equivalent machine code available the instruction and its corresponding machine code is available this op table is also implemented using hash table but the characteristic of op table is static table what is static table uh, once the table is written and kept no modification in that it is just used only for the searching purpose okay this is the very last uh, important uh, information of this video okay now we know what is the role of assembler what is uh, how the assembler is being designed i said assembler is designed in two passes pass 1 and pass 2 okay to assemble the instruction by looking at the instructions only we have to come to know what type of addressing mode it is okay see look into this format op refers to operator m refers to memory if there is a memory in the operand column of the instruction 
it might be either pc relative or base relative addressing mode by default in the beginning we assume it is pc relative if the displacement field is not in the range of minus 2048 to 2047 if it is not in this range then we go and check for base relative addressing mode okay let us see the other clues if there is an at symbol in the operand field then it is indirect addressing mode if there is an hash symbol in the operand field it is immediate addressing mode before the operator if there is a plus symbol it is extended format extended format means nothing but format for instruction of sic xc okay look into this instruction if x is one of the operand in the instruction then it is indexed addressing mode okay so by looking into the instructions only we must be able to know what type of addressing mode it is with this uh we will see one more video uh the next video which is uh, pass one assembler i hope these informations will help you further to do the pass one as well as pass two of a program thank you